there is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Monate Zone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Tiana. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. And for those of you who have not been here yet, this is a YouTube channel dedicated to anti-MLM content. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a video. Today's video, we are going to be talking about thought reform otherwise known and more commonly known as brainwashing and why I believe that Monate market partners are being brainwashed or um, undergoing thought reform tactics by the company in an effort to sell the products and recruit other members. I took it upon myself to read Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism by Robert J. Lifton. This book describes the thought reform tactics that were used on American prisoners of war that were held captive in China during the Korean War. So while this was initially written around the study of American prisoners of war, Robert J. Lifton has extrapolated his studies over the years to apply this to other groups throughout history, um, including large cultist groups, large political ideologies, um, groups that seek to have um, totalism or authoritarian control over a group of people. So within Robert J. Lifton's book, there is a section on brainwashing or thought reform and specific eight criteria that is necessary for thought reform to take place. And I'm going to show you guys real examples that I believe Monate exemplifies of each of those characteristics or criteria that is necessary for thought reform to take place. Included in this video are clips of a lecture from Robert J. Lifton himself. I figure it's best if he explains um, the specific criteria and then I am going to then um, extrapolate off of his definition and expression of the criteria and then how I believe that, yes, Monate will fit into that criteria. Now, when I was writing about and observing what I could about ideological totalism. The prerequisite, the first principle, and maybe it's the predominant principle that's necessary for everything else, is what I came to call milieu control. And that really means the control of all communication in the environment. And the process in thought reform-like procedures in instituting and maintaining and utilizing the milieu control is to try to deepen and internalize that control in people subjected to the process. But milieu control is necessary for all the other features of thought reform. So milieu control essentially is the environment and the control of all communication from the top down within the company. So milieu control is going to be the culture of Monate. It's going to be um, like if we think about monations, milieu control includes giving them a big schedule and list of things to do that they, you know, like this, 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 this on this day, giving them boxes of conditioner and shampoo that they could only open on certain days giving big announcements and drops so you know like they were able to control their drop of the vitamins. Not only would milia control be control of like their physical like actions throughout the day and like those kind of communications, but milia control is also where like your money is going and what's going into your body. So now one of the big things Monet is saying is that, you know, now it's you're healthy from the inside out. So it's not just now, it's not just your hair, it's 
not just, you know, my skin. Now it's also the supplements that we're eating. So now like our money, what we're putting in our body, what we're putting like on, like in and on our body and on our skin and, and like where our finances are going. And not only that, like other milia control is like the, the dream is like another part of like milia control and what you're working for. Um, I think like the MLM network marketing, um, environment is also a part of the milia control. A lot of things like milia control is expandable beyond just cults. Like it's just like the, it's like an environment like milia control could even be like if you and I went on a date, friend date and you know, like we came back to my place and like, I'm um, okay. I'm like, this is a bad example, but I'm like, just like, if I went on a date and I was trying to set the mood and I like dim the lights and put on some music, that's milia control. Like I'm just trying to control the environment um, and like set the mood. So that's like the first thing that's like required is that there's got to be some control or some output of communication um, for like even all of the other things to take place. I'd say like another example of milia control would be people like higher up within the company telling people not to get information from other sources and to only get information from them, from the company. Don't do other investigative research elsewhere because what they're giving you is like, the holy grail. We saw this in that director's meeting where Tom Houlihan said to not pay attention to the YouTube noise and to, um, you know, just listen to them. And I really want you to think about the noise that you're seeing um, on a little bit on the internet is boring legal stuff because it actually has to do with ancient history. It worked out really well for us. And what all this says, if you boil it down, is that we had some issues, we took care of the issues going forward for five years, we're gonna make sure we don't have those issues again, and it's all good. I'm not worried about it, you shouldn't be worried about it, Ray and Stuart aren't worried about it, it's boring legal stuff. I would just tell your, your team, hey, you know what, money's fine, we're living well, we're growing exponentially, things are fine, we're not really worried about that stuff, and yes, just said haters are gonna hate you will not dissuade a hater um so so like you will not dissuade a hater you know like it's kind of like don't look over there look over here um like that's all like boring legal stuff that's all it is but you know what you guys you guys can go read that document you guys can go open it up and you can read it and it's not boring legal stuff or you guys can watch my other video in which i explain how it's not boring legal stuff um but you know, you guys understand what I'm saying, like, Milia control is, like, they have, you know that they have control over what these girls are doing, because the moment they sign on to it, um, they become somebody new. Uh, Robert J. Lifton actually even talks about this persona, um, and he refers to it as what's even called doubling. I came upon an idea that I now find has, I think, very great relevance for cult problems, and that's the phenomenon I call doubling. Why is everyone staring? Oh, don't you see it? See what? The resemblance between us. R resemblance? Between you and me? Well, milieu control and cult behavior can produce or can be a major factor in producing the kind of doubling I think we see in people in cults. You form a cult self. I think a clip that really exemplifies this is this clip I found of a Monate woman's husband and his friend actually pretending to be his wife and her friend on a live for other people for Monate. It just is a prime example of how there really is another persona that these husbands are able to actually take on the caricature of and start mocking and actually pretend to be them. We have uh, samples. If you want to send us a DM, we can send you a sample. Um, if you see uh, underneath his hair, we're starting to grow back. We've been putting cream every day. The IRT spray, Retense Repair Spray, um, repairs your hair follicles. Um, a lot of you guys, I know, might need that. Some of you ladies, too, um, especially in postpartum situations. When you guys are losing your hair with kids. And, and things like that, or just stress in general. Um, 
We have this thickening spray. Pretty much speaks for itself. <laughs> so you have thin hair, it helps thicken your shit up. Um, we have stuff like that. The problem for many people, and this is one reason for their susceptibility to the milieu control, as I think about it now in a social sense, is that they're not suffering from an over-controlled milieu during most of their lives. They're suffering from the absence of any structure in their milieu. And they can feel anomie, alienation, and they can at least initially respond very positively to the intensity of that milieu control. A lot of the times people that join these MLMs, like they don't come from a background of all of this high intensity, high pressure, um, over controlled, manic, milieu control. Um, it's oftentimes people who might not have come from that and they respond initially very well to it because um, it creates this heightened sense of um, validity and structure and something to do during their day or something that they might not have had uh, prior to joining the business. A second fundamental theme that I came upon was what I called mystical manipulation or planned spontaneity uh, and you're all familiar with that. I don't have to go through all the ways in which cults do it. Uh, it can be in some traditional religious ways through chanting and fasting and limited sleep, uh, repetition, singing, uh, in ways that seem spontaneous at least to the newcomer but are very very carefully planned and manipulated from above. If we even break down for two seconds the Monation song, um, you guys, the lyrics are beyond creepy. Like beyond, beyond, beyond creepy. We are, we are, we are Monate. Um, a better way, a, like a brighter day, a better way. We got the attitude, we got the gratitude, everything. It's like, it's like a creepy, like pr appraisal to Monate, like when you really like break down the lyrics and they've got these girls out here dancing to it posting videos out to it doing the most bizarre things to it you guys like pole dancing with babies to this song you guys like I wish you could make this stuff up. I literally wish you could. Getting in groups and choreographing dances to it, you know? We are, we are, we are Monet, like a, a better way. What's the better way? It's just shampoo, you know what I mean? But everybody will tell you it's not just shampoo and they're gonna cry about it online, but it's not just shampoo. With mystical manipulation, oftentimes it's just like coincidences, happenstances, things that are just happen, like are often chalked up to like the greater purpose. We see this in all of the times when these girls say like, whatever's gonna happen, it's gonna be greener on the other side. It's better when you get to where you're going. So we're constantly excusing all of these negative things that keep happening along the way because we're, we're working towards something that's so much better. We're finally, we're gonna retire a husband. We're gonna be financially free. We're gonna get to this goal. So you wouldn't achieve that goal unless you experience these negative things if you are experiencing negative things. So, oh my gosh, you're losing money. It's just, this is the investment that it takes to get to where you wanna be. So it's not just that, it's not just that, you know, you're losing money, but you're losing money for a reason. You get, you get me? Whatever your excuse is, it's minuscule in comparison to what's waiting for you on the other side. It changes your life and all the personal development that you're going to get from this. Like you're going to learn just so much about yourself and like, you know, what you want out of life and what you deserve and what to never settle for and like what to fight for in life. And you're, you know, you're going to realize all of that through investing in yourself, probably for the first time in your life. Excuse me, bitch. Probably for the first time in your life. As we just saw there, it was like, just by starting to do the shampoo thing, like, all of these things are gonna come. For the first time in your life, you're gonna finally actually realize your life potential. Like to me, that's like, I, I feel like that's manipulative, but I don't know. A third and fourth 
set of principles are demand for purity and the cult of confession. Well, the demand for purity, when you look at it, is Sisyphean. You can never become pure enough. It is the manipulation of guilt and shame mechanisms, and nothing is more powerful. So I think that demand for purity is really seen in a couple of different ways. We see demand for purity in the physical products that that the girls are using and telling us that we should be using. So there is that I didn't know that I was using poo poo shampoo with parabens, sulfates, all of these gross things. So now I switch to clean beauty and I'm pure. So I wanted to do this quick video because I just wanted to talk a little bit about Monate and why you should even consider switching over to clean beauty. So typically when you purchase your shampoo from, I don't know, CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, wherever you get your shampoo, um, typically those kinds of shampoos have these toxic ingredients such as silicones, parabens, sulfates, and the list goes on all that nasty stuff that you're currently putting on your hair is not is not on our products um and that to me was huge when i learned about it because i didn't understand i didn't know what a silicone was i didn't know what a paraben was i just wasn't educated um but then i also feel like there's that demand for purity from people once they're even inside it's like are you working hard enough are you putting in the work do you care enough are you messaging enough people um it's all you know they they blame people for having excuses when they're not making money or whatever it is and so there's this like demand of constantly being online messaging doing these things this isn't just about you this is about the the ability that you have okay, to help others in need. I'm gonna repeat that. This is about the ability that you have to help others in need. It could be your family, it could be your spouse, it could be your children. They are counting on you. This business is not meant for people that are making excuses. Oh, it's because I, I worked so long, I'm so busy, and I got home and my husband wanted me to do this and the kids weren't doing that and I just couldn't handle. Oh, it's because my, 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 my kids, I just could, I didn't know who to leave them with. They need my full on attention and I just can't leave my kids. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess you can't get on your computer or on your laptop without your kids being in front of you. And listen, I'm not a mom, but I work with a lot of moms that get shit done. Like that kind of shit. Like I'm not a mom, but I work with a lot of moms that get shit done. Like, shut up. I'm sorry, but like, you, I'm not a mom, but I'm not going to sit here and tell a mom that like what's going on with her kids or like, like if they're like to me, like those aren't excuses. Those, that's fucking life, dude. Like, I'm sorry, but like, don't come on here and tell people that like you're not a mom, but you, like you, you get sh like, you know, moms who get shit done. It's just like everybody has different life circumstances. I don't know. This like that kind of stuff, like. Like this demand for like, if you're going to be on my team, this is the way it's going to go. And like, you, I don't want any excuses. It's just like, isn't the point that you can work this in your own time and like do your own thing? Like you don't need to be like pushed and demanded to be doing of all of these things. Like that's just kind of like my interpretation of like, that's why people would want to do a business like this. If one then moves to the confession process, uh, which is related to the quest for purity, all groups that try to influence others on a significant scale resort to the confession process. It's as old as humankind. We can't say that wherever there is a confession, uh, there is therefore thought reform, a thought reform-like behavior. But where the confession process is systematic and is constantly held to a narrow set of ideological principles, and is bound up with an endless quest for purity, then we're in the territory of thought reform. So the cult of confession, you guys, I would say this one is huge and it's so easy to pinpoint. They are constantly, 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 constantly getting on lives to divulge and confess 
I used to do this, but then I joined Monet, and now I'm this. Now I know. Now I'm smarter. Or now I learned the thing that's not going to make me unhealthy. These Instagram lives are like confessionals. They are public confessionals. Um, and you are, like, if you want to make it, like, you are essentially required to get on these lives and do these things consistently. To me, it seems nearly impossible to be a top distributor and not get on these lives. Like, I, I don't know how you could possibly. Here are some examples of what I would consider like Instagram live um, confessionals. Back then, the back then was not thinking big, was thinking very small. I knew that somewhere out there, there was more. And because I, I took responsibility over my own actions, because I, I, I downloaded one Audible, because I started some personal development on my own and I was looking for answers, these people started to come into my life. And that's the thing I told myself for months is it's too good to be true. I won't be good at it. People won't buy from me. I don't have time. I'm too busy. I don't have the money, blah, 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 blah. God, it's terrifying to think that I almost said no to this because of excuses like that. Completely empty, completely fear-based. I know there are lots of people who are really, really scared. I was one of them. I was really, really scared. It felt like if I said yes and it maybe didn't go the way I wanted it to, it was going to be the end of the world. Ruling out the ice capes melting, meteors becoming crashed into us, the ozone layer leaving, and the sun exploding. The end of the world. I was scared. I wasn't ready. I, but I took the leap. I did it. I thought it was going to be the end of the world. You guys, it's shampoo. Like, I don't know who needs to explain it to these girls, but like, guys, shampoo, shampoo, it's shampoo. And now you guys got supplements, but like, it's like, it's definitely inflated. Well, anyways, continuing on. So the cult of confession. So like, I just think like that one is like very telling um, to me that like these lives, like if, when you start to listen to them now, listen to, um, they almost somewhat disparage like their former self before they started using whatever products it was, it, like, that they're using now. Before I was feeling groggy and slow and boo, I didn't even know I needed these supplements. I didn't even know I needed this collagen, this vegan collagen booster. And now I'm like, it's a, it's a confessional. It's confessional. I see this as a confessional. And I feel like now that I've pointed it out, maybe you might see it as a confessional, like always, like again, like moving forward. There are three more, imp uh, three important ones I would lump together. Uh, what I call the sacred science, the loading of the language, and the principle of doctrine over person. Well, the sacred science um, is a very important kind of idea because if you look at cult behavior, you're likely to find that even in religions or what are claimed to be religions, there is a claim also to scientific truth of some kind. In the scientific age, you claim objective truth. You must make a claim to science in any cult that you're part of. And I think even the smaller cults make those claims if you look for it. I think it's quite obvious the claims to science that Monet, the company, makes, and then also the claims to science that the market partners make. Um, you will see, obviously, you know, Monet claims to have the most award winning dermatologist like Dr. Toasty or who, you know, it's, oh, it's, we have adjusted the most amazing scientific board. Um, and not just that, but they continuously point to these like four amazing key ingredients that do everything. So, and, it, and it's this technology. Our shampoo has the technology, the technology. Um, and then on top of that, um, the sacred science of detoxing exists. It's okay if you're pimply, 
head with you know scabs and falling out hair it's a detox um, they will try to explain this detox any which way you guys literally any which way um, and they are also running like their own personal science experiments so you know like you guys saw when they were burning shampoo in pots and pans so this experiment actually entails some drugstore shampoo which we have the Garnier shampoo and then we also have our Monique shampoo which is clean beauty At this it's already burning <coughs> and it's Um, we saw when we were mending our split ends together with the split end mender. Our split end mender literally mends the split end within 60 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and just coat it. And that was instant, literally gone. We saw them lighting Q-tips on fire with different products. <laughs> Oh my god, do you see this? That looks disgusting. You guys need to see what just happened to the pizza. We will, yeah, we're gonna, sh oh my lord, it looks gross. It's a sacred science, you guys. It's the sacred money science. It's, it's, don't you guys know? It's like, what is Capixel? Like, uh, it's Monat's magic ingredient. Like, it's a magic ingredient. Capixel's a, ma it's magic, you know what I mean? Like. The other thing is that we have four ingredients that make us special. So the first ingredient is Capixel. Um, Capixel actually boosts your hair growth. So a lot of people with um, thinning, balding, alopecia, is that how you say it? I don't know. <laughs> um, cancer patients, a lot of them have seen results um, because most of our products contain Capixel. So that is, um, if you're looking to grow your hair or anything like that, you definitely would want to try our Monate products. How about if you can't even say alopecia, don't tell somebody Monate's going to cure it. I got to start there. Um, and yeah, you know, make like these claims to science. Oh, it's for cancer patients. It's going to help with your eczema too. It's like they should... It's 101 uses for the rejuvenic oil and it literally cures everything. You guys, like, it's, you know, it's just a million claims to the greatest science in the history of the science of the history of science in the world, you know? It all comes down to the science behind these products. So what we have here is an anti-aging hair care line. Pretty much what we did is that we completely changed the game for hair care. Capixel is an ingredient that we use that helps your hair uh, grow out. That, I mean, it's been clinically proven. We've uh, actually done uh, studies on cancer patients. So your hair, no matter what product you're using, almost all of them have Capixel. So your hair is just going to be growing at a faster rate, which is amazing. Your hair is just going to be growing at a faster rate, which is just amazing. Cancer patients, we did all these studies. Like, I, we've been, we've yet to see any of this, like, data. You know what I mean? So, sacred science. So, the next one he talks about, I believe, is loading of the language. Now, if you look further in terms of uh, the loading of the language, language is an extremely important part. Uh, and I think it's a... It's an area of further study that could be very useful in engaging the cult issue. Study the language very carefully. It isn't only that there are the rote terms, of course there are those, but there are also terms that have enormous appeal and can sum up a whole set of emotions satisfactorily and in fact very powerfully for young people, at least at a certain phase in their lives, and can indeed help young people in a phase of depression or a sense of being lost to at least a temporary sense of revitalization. The language has all of those elements. So I would say the loading of the language, we really see this in the 
Um, we see this, I think, on a couple different levels. I think we see this from MLMs in general with a language of using things, you know, financial freedom. Um, when they say ridiculous slogans like, I'm going to retire my husband, like that's such a network marketing thing to say. I didn't even know the words financial freedom. And financial freedom is exactly what you need. Um, boss babe, um, you know, I like that that term i feel like boss babe has it it's synonymous with multi-level marketing in my personal opinion within monate specifically some of the language you know that they've got they've got like their special lingo when it comes to like i'm a managing market mentor i'm a i'm a, i'm an mmp i'm an sed like those are like specific lingo that is direct to them and then they've also got you know like their shampoo mafia type um talk where it's just like or like married to the mafia you guys like these girls were dressing up in wedding dresses and like saying that they're like married to the mafia like it's like they're married to their job and they love it so much it's like those keywords are just so synonymous with that um you know with that environment that you're in and then um i i think that the next one is principle of doctrine over person now, the principle of doctrine over person is obvious, uh, and it really means that as soon as one begins to have doubts that arise from one's own direct experience, one sees evidence of the charismatic leader's less than perfect behavior, one sees evidence that contradicts claims of the cult or even exposes lies that one has been subjected to, Doctrine over person, and this is true of all totalistic ideology, requires that you reject the personal experience in favor of the truth of the doctrine. And that is a key element which every totalistic ideology depends upon. It really is at the heart of totalistic ideology, and it has to be recognized and looked at. So my understanding of principle of doctrine over person as it relates to Monet and network marketing would be disregarding um, facts and statistics as far as income disclosure statements go, um, disregarding the fact that you have personally lost money in the hopes of making money, um, and then also, you know, like actively choosing to overlook things like the um, Florida Attorney General's uh, voluntary compliance that came out overlooking all of the women who have said that they've experienced hair loss, hair problems, things like that. An ongoing federal investigation into a trendy line of hair care products reveals concerns about the company's manufacturing plant. Call 6 Investigates first exposed consumer claims about Monet hair care back in March. Tonight we have the results of an FDA inspection and Call 6's Care Kenny explains why the agency says Monet's products could be contaminated. You know, other things like principle of doctrine over a person, it's like you would actually, you have girls who actually believe that the detox process is real and telling other women that because they've got contact dermatitis that the product is working and the company allows the women to continue to say that. Some facts about hair shedding, okay? I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of these articles circulating. You know what? I'm not gonna even say it when circulating because it doesn't even matter. The only thing that's circulating is new blood flow into your hair follicle. And I'm gonna show you guys how by uh, using some lotion. All right, so this is the buildup inside your follicle. All right, Ooh. That is going to grow once this comes out, right? Because you start washing with Monet products. It's going to clean out the buildup. Okay, the buildup is clean. Then guess what? Once the buildup is clean and it falls out, it's because this is actually coming in. The new little hair bob. Oh my God! Um, again, the company allowing them to say that it's the principle of doctrine. I think that their doctrine and principle is that they'd rather make money and keep the this idea that they are somehow scientifically advanced and that it's like a process that's happening um, and over the fact that like there are real people who are losing their hair and having like these experiences. That's like my 
um, I extrapolation of the idea of principle of doctrine over person over actual experiences. If you don't work, you don't make money. It's that simple, that easy. I don't. I, it is what it is, right? So things like telling people if you don't work, you don't make money, fully knowing that saying 99% of people don't make money in an MLM. So to say that it was because you weren't working, um, you could, if like 100 people are busting their ass, one person's going to be successful. Are you going to tell 99 people that they weren't working? 99% of people, it's because they weren't working or is it that it's a system in which people are really actually set up to fail i think like that to me is something that people overlook all the time like you could literally look at the income disclosure statement there's no way that every girl that we see on the internet is thriving and is successful and living the best life and like it has the keys to the caddy like you know what i mean the last and, and ultimate and dangerous principle is that of really uh assuming the right to grant or remove from people the right to existence, or what I call the dispensing of, exi of existence. If you believe, as a group, that you have the ultimate truth, and more important in this Manichaean division, ultimate good as opposed to ultimate evil, the next logical step is to believe that you have the right to decide who has earned existence and who has no right to existence, to dispense existence. So I think we see dispensing of existence in a couple of ways. I think we see dispensing of existence um, in the initial stages when people within MLMs tell you to shun other people that don't support you. Um, so it really lessens their value and their opinion in your mind. And then I think that another way in which people within MLMs um, partake in the dispensing of existence is when people actually leave the MLM and they are no longer valuable to the girls within the MLM. Like they're no longer their friend um, because they stopped selling or whatever it is. They've been shunned from the group. So we see it time and time again, like people join because they think they found a sisterhood and then they stop selling the product and they are no longer a part of that sisterhood and they are no longer in the in crowd. So we do see that often. Um, people say like, if your man doesn't support you, you guys, if your man doesn't support you, get you a new man. If your man doesn't support you selling Monet, you should get you a new man's. That's the option if your man doesn't support you selling shampoo. Like, I get the idea that, like, you want to be with somebody who supports your dreams, aspirations, and goals, but, like, joining an MLM, if your man doesn't support you joining a network marketing company, which 99% of people lose money, get you a new man, maybe he's just looking out you know like he's he cares about you or like people say if your parents don't support you like who cares like all of that stuff it's like it's not that these people don't support you i really don't think it's that these people don't support you i think it's that they don't want you to get roped into a scheme at the end of the day i really do are you ready to cut out toxic relationships are you ready to tell your friends that want to go smoke weed to fuck off are you ready to tell your mom that's telling you that your business is a scam to say hey if you're not have anything positive to say please keep it to yourself mom are you ready to go tell your friends that smoke weed to fuck off are you ready to tell your mom that selling your business is a scam? Hey, I just think it's just like, it's just like, it's always telling, they're always telling people, like to tell other people to just like, if they ain't paying your bills, then they don't need nothing, 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 don't. And don't listen to nobody because they don't care and done and done. Like you got, you know, it's, it's all, you guys, you know how often we hear that. It's just like. It's just like the running theme. Like, I don't need to have a million examples. Like, you guys know. You guys, I'm sure some of you guys have lived it. I'm sure you guys have experienced it from people within your upline. Like, that manipulation that, um, you know, that exists. Um, that's just, like, shun those people because they don't support you. Now, if one looks at the issue of dispensing of existence... It takes on a process that Eric Erickson called pseudo-speciation, in which we of the human species 
treat members of our fellow species as though they belong to a different species and were not human beings. And of course, that's done all the time by different groups, by certain national groups or religious groups, and certainly uh, among cults. And that becomes a societal issue in every sense. I think another example um, of this like pseudo speciation is almost like this um, this like this mindset shift too, you know, like oh you guys you regular people are just a you are cool with working a nine to five with being in the rat race doing you know like congrats being a slave to the man, um, so it's like it creates this otherism or it's also this otherism of oh you use brand store shampoo oh. So it's like you're less than, it's like there is this, there is this superiority complex that I just genuinely think come, that comes with being in an MLM um, where people think that they are inherently better than you or they try to make it seem like they are after so much more, like they care so much more about achieving their goals than you do. Um, and they look down on other people who maybe aren't like grinding their gears doing this for like a second stream of income or they're not like aware that they should be doing, I don't know, more like um, or like, like us poor souls, you know, how dare we just work 40 hours a week. Um, I feel like there's just that kind of like... Uh, they think this, this, this look down upon other people. Those are the ways in which I think these original themes that I tried to delineate so many years ago still seem all too relevant. I wish they were much less relevant now, but some of the things I said are a way of bringing them up to date or connecting them with things that one sees right now. So those are the eight criteria for thought reform. It's milia control, mystical manipulation, demand for purity, cult of confession, sacred science, loading of the language, principle of doctrine over person, and dispensing of existence. So now that we've gone over those eight criteria, um, Robert J. Lifton also goes over some other things that have had like that play a factor in thought reform. One of the things he talks about is the mass media revolution. Uh, I mentioned also the mass media revolution. We don't pay enough attention to the mass media revolution. To some extent, it has served the cults, and to some extent, it undermines them in ways that I suggested. But it's a very powerful process. The mass media revolution now allows any of us at any time to have at his or her um, uh, beck and call virtually any image from the present or the entire human cultural past through television or radio or other media. That is a radically new situation. So yeah, Robert Lifton, he talks about the mass media revolution and how it's really just paved the way for um, disseminating information. And I don't think he ever could have imagined when he had written this book that we would be at a place where Instagram, Twitter, Facebook um, existed um, and how we pick up and learn information from others. I just don't think that that was anticipated. And I think that companies obviously play this to their advantage um, when they uh, use people for their marketing tactics and um, for their schemes in which they sell their products. Um, and I'm calling them schemes because I think it's a scheme, bro. Like, that's that. that. These aren't all, in any sense, as you can tell, psychiatric or pure psychological problems. They are broad social problems. It may be that what we, as those of us who are clinicians, and there are many in this room I know, can most do is, of course, help people, but also provide, use our specialties to provide knowledge and education. I think that real education that gets to these psychological dimensions, as well as to the larger historical ones, can serve very well and reach a very large audience. So you heard it from Robert J. Lifton first. Um, I'm not a clinician, you guys, but I do firmly believe that um, in order to dismantle some of these features that exist in society. I think it comes from understanding them and knowing when we are under the control of thought reform. Um, I think even after doing this um, little 
study for myself. I think that I have realized in ways in which I may have been manipulated in other facets of life. And I think that this information to you guys, you can think about it and extrapolate it to like other things like political ideologies, um, groups, other groups that you've been a part of. Um, and, you know, ask yourself, like, if all of these key features exist, like maybe you might potentially be in a cult or you might be under the control of thought reform or brainwashing um so i think that yeah like starting with the understanding of like what you what needs to take place for brainwashing to occur and if you can maybe look and say like uh oh like loaded up language a sacred science like um principle of doctrine of a person oh my goodness like mystical manipulation like maybe i'm in a cult you guys so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below uh as always thank you guys so much for tuning in to my youtube channel please be sure to like subscribe and hit the bell and you guys oh my god i just want to say before i get off the camera i had to refilm this video three times the first time if you mess up like one time's okay to mess up you guys like i left my fan on like i said it was like i was in a wind tunnel two times the second time I left my fan on again and I recorded it again and I literally you guys I was like how do you make the same mistake how do you make the same mistake so I set myself back so like I would have had this out sooner and I really do want to apologize because I said that like, I would have this out sooner but I fudged myself over I recorded myself over with uh, my freaking fan on again blowing right into the mic so it, literally you can't hear anything so I want to thank you guys for your patience um, but yeah let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments thank you guys so much for those of you who have made it to this point in the video and if you made it to this point in the video and you're not subbed to my channel like what are you doing just subscribe and if I'm being honest with you if you walked into a record company if you got in I think they'd throw you out even before you sang um that's me telling you to just subscribe to my channel oh and also you guys I made this meme but I couldn't really figure out anywhere to put it in but um James Corden doing monations this is how I feel about it yeah, immediately no immediately no <laughs> immediately no like like instantly I was like yeah no that was that was my thought but I love you and your value stays the same you're still valuable but yeah I didn't there was like no realistic like to put this meme in there but like I'm not making another video about monations but I needed I liked this meme so anyways bye